Let me, oh, I have to press go live in YouTube first. Hang on. Hello, everybody. Jacob Jans here. Um, we're going to give everyone a couple of minutes to uh, show up before we officially get started. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here today. I'm excited for these presentation. Her presentation um, last year I found to be quite wonderful. So I'm very excited for this presentation today. Um, if you're here, you're welcome to say hello in the chat and where you're from in the world. Um, I'm in Toronto. Um, it's really, it's really wonderful to see so many people showing up. Um, oh, hello from Arizona and England. Oh, well, all sorts of people from around the world, Scotland, the UK, Florida. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. We're just going to wait one more minute so everybody um, has a chance to show up before we officially get started. Um, oh, hi, Shara. Good to see your name there, Annette, Pam. Hi, hello. Everyone from around the world, it's good to see you here today. Okay, one more second. Okay, everybody, let's get started. Hello, writers. Welcome. This is Jacob Jans with the Writers Workshop at Authors Publish. Today, I'm pleased to introduce V Key Now, who will be giving a talk on the art of collaborating with other writers and artists um, so you can produce new and exciting work. This is part of our monthly lecture series where we present talks on the craft of writing and the business of publishing. Um, v. Key Now is a critically acclaimed author and poet. V's work has reached wide audiences. Her book, Fish in Exile, published by Coffeehouse Press, was reviewed by the BBC, LA Times, etc. cetera. Um, v's books include Swimming with Dead Stars, The Vegas Dilemma. Um, she's already published a number of books this year um, with more books on the way. V is an incredibly prolific author, um, which as you'll see is, is in part due to her collaborations with other artists. Um, not only is V prolific, um, she produces wonderful work that gets widely published. And that's part of why I'm so excited for today's presentation. Um, thank you V for being here and welcome. Um, thank you, uh, Jacob. Um... Thank you for having me. Um, hello, everyone from around the world. Um, I am uh, really excited about um, today's um, lecture, which is on the art of collaboration. Um, and so we shall begin uh, with the slideshow. So the art of collaboration. Um, and uh, writing is generally solitary, but it doesn't have to be. Um, uh, in this lecture, we'll discuss the nature of collaboration, the art of co-writing, participating, how to start and sustain one. I will discuss my own history with collaboration, generating literary and artistic products with others. Um, collaboration can be seen as an impelling generative mechanism for producing new, exciting, and prolific work. It can also be seen as an antidote to stagnation, an innovative general method of self-reflecting Alter, auto altering, meta critiquing, and reverse editing our own work through the agglutinated literary styles with others. These are some of the collaborative books that I have um, already been published with. Um, this is with Press 111, Press 1111, um, my collaboration with um, Ali Ross, Human Tetris. Um, my, uh, another collaborative book that came out um, is uh, the one that I wrote with my partner, Jessica Alexander, That Woman Could Be You. Um, and that is through Blaze Walks. 
Um, and another collaborative book that I've um, that will be entering the world is with Daikation, um, and it's with um, uh, Kerplunk, um, and it's going to come out in twenty in January twenty twenty three. Um, and I will discuss all of these collaborative um, efforts with you to inspire you to see that um, um, collaboration is a very um, exciting and prolific venture for everyone. Um, you don't have to be um, awesome at it. Um, you can just do. Um, and these are some of the highlight points that I will be addressing in my, um, my talk. Um, collaboration have always been my favorite medium of generating new and exciting work. Um, I will talk to you about the history of how it's born um, and collaboration become an antidote for overwhelming isolation for me that often exists in the writing profession. Um, and particularly during the COVID pandemic, um, I experienced this when I was really alone in my Vegas apartment in Las Vegas. Um, and I was playing Scrabble like 16 hours a day, trying to just like um, not go, uh, you know, not go crazy with like all the um, isolation that I was experiencing. So I started collaborating with a, a woman named Miriam across from uh, from in Norway, actually. And I started learning a new language called uh, Norwegian um, in order to collaborate with her. Um, and that made use of my time uh, quite um, expediently. Um, so a collaborative extends the artistic vocabulary of of my writerly experience, and I'll talk about how um, how um, how it expanded me as an artist and as a writer. Um, uh, the best kind of collaboration, it seemed to me, in the end, are those I conduct with longtime friends, our friendship in the earlier days of their existence, um, and um, that is uh, mentioned with uh, Daike, um, uh, Jessica Alexander, and uh, my long friend, my best friend Ali Ras. Uh, collaboration with others from my personal experience, it requires very little to no editing. Um, a lot of the works that you see in the world, we, um, you know, like with um, Human Tetris, there was no editing done at all. It was just how it was um, because we were writing, um, and I'll talk more about that when that time comes, um, but just to give you a head up uh, of what's to come. Um, and collaboration ultimately allowed me to write more books at an accelerated rate. Anyway, um, I'm going to stop share uh, this um, 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 PowerPoint um, and um, and just head you right to my um, my 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 talk. Okay. Um, um, before um, I became um, I started collaborating. Um, I did an MFA at Brown University. Um, it was my um, um, I originally wanted to get into that. One of the reasons is one I wanted to make films. Um, I wanted to be a filmmaker, um, but um, that's a long story. Okay, um, and so and I end up doing a lot more books. Um, at this point in my life, I've written about fifty-five books. Um, twenty of them are about approximately twenty or twenty twenty-six of them, chat books included, are out in the world uh, from different presses. Like I think maybe ten or fifteen presses. So, um, collaborations have always been my favorite medium of generating new and exciting work. It has now become my primary medium of artistic expression. My love for collaborative works began and prospered exponentially when I was pursuing my MFA at Brown University in two thousand and twelve. Outside of the MFA structure, I had no community and no one I knew to collaborate with. My MFA cohorts at Brown opened my new literary doors for me. Um, collaborate became an antidote for the overwhelming isolation for me that often exists in the writing profession. It started with asking poets um, such as Ben Luton, writers such as Seth Torje, um, who was originally Sarah Torje, but they transitioned uh, from Seth from Sarah to, to Seth, Matt Coburn, Mona Awad, and playwrights like Casey Llewellyn and my Brown University program to write either an epic poem or a long short story or a short play with me. Um, so that's how I began. And you can begin with the same way. You can just jump right in and ask one of your, uh, your friends and your peers to just um, write um, a poem with you together. Like um, you can alternate between alphabet. Like if you, um, 
I say that, um, and texting back and forth. So the first person that texts the word could be from an alphabet. So A for the first person and B. So A as in like an apple and then B um, in an, uh, for something else. And you just alternated that. I did that with uh, Stacy Chung when she just asked me if um, to write a text with her. And I did. I just um, generated that with her over a short time. And then um, over tea or coffee, doing my spoon around or with my oven blown full blast, we often met to collaborate in my apartment at 458 Wickenden Street. Um, I live above a, um, um, a uh, tattoo parlor. So there was, um, there was a lot of excitement. There was a lot of visitors coming in and sometimes I pull them from, um, uh, from, from, the, from the tattoo parlor and ask them to collaborate with me. Um, I was so prolific with my collaborative effort that I end up co-produced two very short films, one with my fellow MFA cohorts from India, Gargi, uh, Hari Takhan. We made a very short film called In the Diurnal Bath together. The efforts took us an entire semester for production. Collaboration became so pertinent to my growth as a writer and artist that I found myself working on the other short film with a pos po proposal film project called Sex Fruit with uh, Stephen Olsen, who originally didn't start out as a writer. He was an actor and a dancer. So, you know, oftentimes we think, oh, I must collaborate with someone uh, in my own field, like another poet. But actually, if you find working with them, you navigate from, um, 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 uh, from I think, uh, like, um, when um, he, he became a writer later, he became an, um, through uh, our influence, influencing each other, we influenced each other, he ended up becoming a writer as well. So um, even if your interest is elsewhere, there's always uh, ways to, um, to transforming that. Um, uh, you hear me better now? Okay, better. I'm sorry, um, I apologize. Uh, did you want me to go back for that or um, may I continue? Should I continue? Okay, um, collaboration extends the artistic vocabulary of my life vitally experience, um, existent, and now has become an important vehicle for me to draw deeper connection with others um, whom I have already had deeper bond with. Um, when I wrote the epic poem with Ben Luton during the fall and spring um, of, um, of 2012 and 13, Ben and I did very little editing. We were trying to weave a long fabric of text that didn't have a beginning or ending. It was formless and incomprehensibly nuanced. It was a marriage of confusion, congruous voices, his being very sonically ambient and humorous and mine was very lyrical and philosophical. Our two voices like two ribbon uh, move through a river of reality, reshaping and restructuring the portrait of time or in our case, the lack of time. We produced approximately three notebooks over the course of two semesters. We only made time to edit one poem out of the 200 plus pages we produced together. We edited it for cd Write Left Workshop like the way I edited the sex fruit film with Stephen, uh, we decided to edit our own version, our own interpretation of the collaboration. Ben and I each extracted from our long fabric text and we each took lines from each other to generate a new poem. We asserted our own individual line breaks and when we completed the editing process, Ben walked away with a new poem and I similarly. The editing process remind me very much of a text buffet where Ben and I stood inside a kitchen making a buffet of literary dishes and our literary dishes flooded the kitchen counters, kitchen cabinets, tables and chairs. Um, after we re briefly rested, we took a plate and served us our portion from the colossal buffet we concocted. A meal matched sublimely for each of our respective uh, diet. It was an efficient and highly productive way of making more text from the already pre-generated text. A way of making more gourmet dishes from the dishes that were already served. After I graduated, my epic project would bend but onto the darkness of time. In fact, I wrote three manuscripts uh, with Ben and none of them were out in the world. Um, 
And Ben uh, shifted into a different direction and um, he struggled a lot uh, during his time um, with uh, publishing, you know, like when you um, send a book out into the world, um, it's really hard to find a home. I was very fortunate that uh, two of my books came out in 2016, from uh, one from Coffee House Press and Night Book Press. And so um, if we had collaborated, worked together, uh, some of our manuscript would have entered the world as well, but it fell to a wayside. Um, but that's to say that we were very productive, even if no one could get to see the lights of its, to see it's visible in the, in the literary community. Um, and I highly suggest that you do the same. Like one way just to collaborate is just to ask anyone. Um, don't um, don't uh, wait until, um, 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 so someone wished to hear an excerpt. Should I, um, an excerpt from, um, I can give you an example of a collaborative from, um, um, okay, um, let's, uh, um, I'll, I'll show you um, a collaboration that I did with, um, um, it's, this is an example with, um, um, it's okay with you, Jacob, with Jacob I, I screen share. Go ahead, yeah. Okay, um, uh, this is my collaboration with my partner, um, Ben Luton, um, I don't have that published in the published work, but with my partner, Jess, uh, Jess Alexander, we collaborated on um, these two pieces. Um, this one is we call we call um, a you met death on Lex um, with Jessica, and uh, so we alternate lines. So she wrote, um, um, I wrote, uh, you met uh, death. Uh, uh, my partner wrote uh, this line, you met death on Lex, and I wrote. Um, and asked her to meet you at a hotel in Brooklyn. And then she wrote, you would, Jessica wrote, you would not meet her in Vegas where the sound of your mother's movement moves through the wall between our room. And then I wrote, meanwhile, in another state, death courted our brothers on Uber and Grindr. Um, and so we alternate between the two of us. And we created, um, that, that's just from like um, two or three days of work, you know, where we just alternate writing back and forth. Um, and then we would send these out to publication. It took us three months to write a 300 page manuscript and was doing a very hard time in our life because we were both teaching full time jobs and we were so busy. You know, oftentimes people say you need to collaborate when you have time, but actually we had no time. We were teaching. I was teaching um, about 20 plus students and my partner was teaching about um, 30 students, so we were maxed out in our teaching capacity. And yet uh, we made time to just like every morning when I took the bus, uh, the train ride into the city from um, um, Denver into Boulder, I would uh, insert all these. I would write one word at a time on my phone and one, one letter at a time on my phone during the entire whole bus ride. And we would produce um, a large amount of this um, on our work. Um, um, another one that we did was this, and then we also did the art collaboration where um, um, uh, there was an art piece that we did together. So we did a picture, uh, we, we took pictures. Uh, I took this picture when we were in um, Denver and we wanted to use the same text and overlay it with, um, so we start doing like a non-traditional um, non uh, book formatting. Uh, we started, playing out our manuscript. So it reads like both poetry and, and photography. This is at the train station that we were um, at. And so my collaboration with, um, um, with, uh, with my partner was very productive. As you can see, you can do many different ways, uh, different forms of the, the writing format. And that works really well for us. Um, and so uh, my collaboration with my partner was very prolific. Um, we um, not we wrote it last year in from uh, August uh, two thousand and um, and twenty um, uh, uh, twenty one. August, uh, no, uh, we started August 21, we finished it in December. Uh, I said we wanted to start editing it in 2022. Um, 
uh, December 2021 and have it ready to enter the world uh, for the publishers in 2022. And uh, by February, it got accepted. So we kept on submitting our work. We were like, um, if we get rejected, we submit five more presses. So we just, we were relentless in our efforts. Um, and so, um, um, so that was my collaboration with my partner. Um, and um, if I go back to the other part um, of my other collaboration, um, it's the one with my partner, uh, with my best friend, um, Ali Rai. Uh, it was the best kind of collaboration. Um, um, I don't know if you remember about um, online Tinder, but um, um, yeah, like um, um, we were, I, she wanted me to, my best friend and wanted me to uh, start a dating again. And I was a writer. I just, I wanted to focus on just writing and making, uh, writing a lot of books. I didn't really care about the dating world. And so um, my best friend, Ali Raz said, you know, you need to write all these uh, personals, you know, create personals on, 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 um, on, um, uh, on, on, Lex, I think, or on some of the other dating website. And I was so bored with them. I was just like, I don't like reading them. And I thought they were boring. And I was like, I'm going to create, I'm going to create personals, but mainly it's for you to, to, to be entertained. And then I said, how about we write a book together? Um, I write one personal um, and she writes uh, another, another, another page in the personal. And so we alternate back and forth back and forth, back and forth. And we were able to create, um, and so um, sometimes you can invite your personal life into um, um, the work. And I'll screen share with you um, the, uh, this one that I did with my, my, my best friend, Ali, Ali Ras. Um, and it's called Human Tetris, and it was published by Press 1111. We also did the same thing. We wrote it um, um, in the year 2020. And then uh, it was the end, uh, December 31st, when we alternate, I only gave us one month to finish the book. So when you create a project together, you would need a deadline, like a very hard deadline. You can't just say, oh, we'll finish it in 2027. You know, you might be dead by then, you know? So don't, don't, don't put it into some ubiquitous future. Set a very firm deadline when you collaborate. And so I told um, my best friend, Ali Ras, that, we must have this manuscript in a, in a month. And so we wrote um, together. And I think uh, maybe one of this um, was able to, um, um, I don't know if it's uh, Rough Ghosts, maybe it's Rough Ghosts that is, they are able to uh, see, this is what we did. So this is an example of um, a, um, 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 uh, a line that we wrote together um, and we have different states. So um, Ali Rad wrote, be my beehive, be my boner and Clyde. Um, I need someone sexy to blame for all the great things. Actually, I wrote this. Um, so Ali Rad must have wrote, looking for my Panadol. So I wrote this. I actually forget my own. See, sometime when you collaborate together, you don't even recognize that you've written something Thing. Um, and now I remember how I wrote this. Um, be my beehive, be my boner and Clyde. I need someone um, sexy to blame for all the great things that are happening in my awesome life. Um, and so, um, uh, um, sorry, I'm trying to um, not be distracted by all this uh, linked. I apologize. Uh, let me see if I can get out of here. Um, um, maybe I'll stop here. Um, but um, that's how my collaboration with Ali Ras manifested. Um, and um, so don't, don't, don't think that you, when you are entering a book, you have some really preconceived concept of what a, a collaboration should be like. It's, it, it can be very restricting. And for me with Ali Ras, I just like, we're going to do personal, we're going to exchange back and forth. And then uh, once we have uh, 60 pages, which is what a typical poetry collection um, embody. Um, then we um, shift into um, uh, the uh, entering the word mode. Um, and I, I really love that type of collaboration where you don't have some already preconceived projects that kind of stagnant 
or paralyze you. And sometimes you think of something so prodigious that it limits. And for me, um, with Ali Ras, because it's so spontaneous, um, it happens in um, in the one month period. And then in February of that year, um, it was accepted by Press 1111. And then by uh, September, we, we chose September uh, 6 or September 9 because it was like 6, 6 9 or 9, 6. Um, just to make it really sexy as a, a publication date, but we could have had it earlier, like in June, June 9th or something. Um, and publishing, um, my publisher says like in June, uh, in Tuesdays, usually when a book enters the world. Um, and so, um, so that was my collaboration with, uh, uh, with US. Um, and it's, uh, it's from spontaneous, um, it's almost like spontaneous combustions. Um, uh, during um, the pandemic, however, um, I collaborated uh, a large book project with um, a woman uh, named Ruth Cam 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 Cameron. Um, she was living in the in the India at that time. I was living in an apartment in uh, Sin City, and we wrote one thousand pages in a Google Doc. So every day we met up for two hours a day. So say um, if you are not uh, time constrained, like um, with Ali Ross, who was in a, uh, in a master program um, um, at another institution, she couldn't really engage. There's only a particular time in which she could collaborate. And so she has time. But if you are not time constricted at all, and you are in, we're back in COVID again, and you have all this time to read and write, um, the best kind is the one I also did with Brie. Um, and so every day we met for two hours a day and we just meet in a Google Doc and she wrote a few lines and I wrote and we alternate back and forth um, uh, endlessly. Um, and we met each day for months, writing one hour, two hours a day. Uh, we spent two or three months editing the manuscript down from 1,000 to 150 pages. And the manuscript is split into five sections um, with elliptical narrations and other parts um, included. Um, and um, when we edit our lengthy manuscript extensively like, like so, revision became an act of cloaking or viewing, smoking, screening the depth of intimacy that lay between um, its translucent economic parameters. Um, um, is is people having a hard time hearing me, Jacob? I think I think it's okay. Okay, great. Um, um, I I think maybe sometimes the papers are shuffling against the computer that might be causing sound issues. Okay, but I apologize for that. I think it's okay. Okay. Um. Um. So. Um. Um, the last, uh, the volume is very quiet. Can you hear me now? Your volume is fine on my end. Okay. Um, maybe I can switch it to, um, a non-paper presentation so that, um, it's, it's not shuffling so much so that other people can hear it so well as well. Does that work? Okay. Um, I can shift to the last uh, collaboration that I did with um, Dai K. Um, Dai K is uh, also uh, an instructor at um, Author Published um, as well, and they are amazing um, to collaborate with. We um, collab collaborated on um, this project um, called um, Funeral, um, and I'll, I'll, I was the um, the one that. Uh, I the, the last to the last screen on the PowerPoint presentation that you've seen earlier, uh, but I'll populate it here so you can see. Um, um, I'll screen share this. Um, Dai K and I, um, uh, I met, I guess, um, during the uh, COVID isolation, um, I there was a lot of anti-Asian sentiment 
um, in the community. Um, there was a lot of backlash. And Daike was one of the few uh, writers in this world who, um, who made me feel like connected to my Asian um, and felt like I had camaraderie and friendships and support, um, especially um, uh, the amount of hardship that we were experiencing um, as, uh, as, an, um, as an, in our own private um, Asian community, um, a lot of bigotry. Um, and so when Daike reached out, um, I, got, I got a chance to read all their beautiful work. I went online and I just consumed all their work. And um, it was the first experience that I, I, didn't, um, I didn't really connect with a lot of the Asian community because I live um, a lot of predominantly, a large portion of my life uh, for 20 years um, in Iowa City. Um, in Iowa, whereas there was a lot of corn, cows, and and um, bovine. And so um, connecting with Daike was an important part of my connection to the literary community. And so Daike said, you should read uh, this, you should watch this film, um, um, a Funeral uh, uh, of Roses. Um, and, um, and after I watched the film, um, we began suddenly uh, co-writing a manuscript together based on that. Uh, that film and all, uh, also manifesting characters. So our chapbook is um, is embodied in this part. Um, it um, it has uh, prose images, alphabet lists, diagrams, songs, and miniature plays. And we went everywhere with the manuscript. We didn't really um, uh, care what direction, and we just alternate. So Daike would write like for three or to five pages, and I would write the same, and we would produce. Um, the collaborative work. Um, what I love about this collaboration is that sometimes through uniform, like um, share um, agonies with our own like um, 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 racial prejudice, um, we are able to connect on a manuscript and share our love for similar like Asian films, Asian cultures, Asian food. Um, Daike and I started like between all of our collaborative work, we send each there's like uh, moon cakes and Daike sent me moon cake and I, and I sent Daike a bunch of Asian author books because there were only like, I only had like five or six Asian books that I accumulate. Um, a lot of my knowledge were Western born, um, a lot of, of um, Godard, a lot of um, authors like Jeanette Winterson's and other writers that are famous in the United States and around the world, but very, um, very few Asian influences. And so one way we, we educate each other is through collaboration, but also sending each other gifts, which was our primary language of communication as well. And from those um, um, external experiences, we produce a great manuscript together. And then we ultimately, from a complete stranger, Bill have a, a beautiful friendship as well. And so, um, you know, like, Oftentimes people think um, collaboration from a very literary um, and um, business um, standpoint, but I feel like it's a very um, emotional and psychological uh, connection in which that transactions just extend so uh, infinitely into the future where the, the, the transaction is so amazing that you don't think it is actually, um, uh, it's so seamless and beautiful. Um, I just really love um, um, my experience with um, Daike in that sense. And, um, and we have a manuscript. Uh, we actually were going to present um, at uh, the screening um, on October 31st. We were doing that as also another extension of our collaboration. Um, we shifted into like the performance base of our collaboration, but um, I became sick. <laughs> And I couldn't come to uh, the presentation and Daike zoomed me in. Um, I was on a digital screen and uh, Daike sort of set it up at the bookstore um, um, at actually a name of books, which um, Jacob uh, uh, not, lived not too far from uh, um, a while ago. Um, and so um, this is to say that there are different ways in which you can engage in 
the art of collaboration. It could be, um, you, it would be something that you measure ahead of time. Um, it would be something that you can do spontaneously. It could be a small project where you're just writing one poem with another stranger and that would be it. Or you can write a whole book. And then even if you have a whole book, you can have like a book tour together. You could um, experience so many different ways in which um, the collaborative world um, infused for all of us. Um, 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 I can read you the conclusive um, aspect of um, my, um, my, my lecture um, and, and I will be ready for questions. Does that sound good to you, um, um, uh, Jacob? Okay. Um, um, okay. Um, even projects that drifted away due to time and distance can find themselves resuscitated after years or decades of relinquishment and desertion. When I asked Sarah Burgoyne, whom I interviewed for her poetry book, Because the Sun, from Coach House Press, if she would be interested in collaborating with me on the Pi Project, she gleefully agreed. We started collaborating in early spring of 2021, and we continue to work on our infinite project to this day. And with some irony, I began the project with some other collaborator possessing the same name, Sarah. I guess the project was destined to have some type of Sarah, wife of Prophet Abraham and mother of Isaac, as our co-collaborator. Um, and it makes sense that project is so biblical and so biblical in its proportion. We haven't spent any time on the editing of existence. We sort of revise it while we work on it. And I doubt we will be devoting extensive time in the near future, modifying, altering, or reworking on it. Collaboration due it to its time constructed, time bound, time composed in nature is like the game Jenga, where each sentence a player collaborates stacks on top of another sentence thus end up creating the shape and structure of that collaboration. In the revision process, one is asked to remove one tile, one sentence from that in-progress structure. In this case, the Pi project, removing one tile would make the entire project collapse into itself, and it's not wise to activate that kind of revision. If that tile lifts up on top of that structure, removing that tile won't destroy that structure. But somehow, on that top sentence exists a top sentence at all times. No revision in an instant like this is a type of revision itself. Sometimes doing nothing or initiate the art of no revising is doing a lot and by nature effortless and unforced, which is what collaborative efforts have always been for me. And I hope you pursue it uh, with relentless passion, you know? Um, and it's just like, you just, you just, you um, you just ask some, be the brave, like, you know, asking someone on a date is really hard. They may say no, you know, you just have to, even if you have a romantic partner already, you just have to ask them in a, like a literary partner, like a literary date. Could you, would you collaborate with me on this poetry project? Uh, just a very simple question and ask. And then you just go into a Google doc or a text back and forth until you get a collaboration. Um, you just have to ask. Um, and that's the first initial uh, gesture that you can do is you just go and ask. Um, and uh, I um, I have had only one person who declined me. And so I've asked about a hundred people. And so that's a pretty good, um, it's better than publishing where you submit 100 piece uh, stories and you only get accepted one piece. Um, so collaboration also is an emotional booster, you know, like an, um, like, a, like, um, what is it called? Like, a um, self-esteem, um, um, what is that word for, um, a self-esteem booster, um, because the, the rate of acceptance are so high. Um, if you wrote, um, like for me, when I look at my submittable, I, I, when I look at it, I realize that about every 100 submissions, I get one accepted. Oh, ego booster. That's the right word. Thank you so much, Ann Willow, um, for your, um, your uh, 
and your help in that. Um, so um, don't 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 um, don't don't be afraid to ask someone, and don't be afraid of the unknown. You you just don't know what you're doing. Like most of the time, I would collaborate. I don't even know where the the manuscript is heading. But in the end, when we put together, it kind of come together in a very beautiful way. Um, anyway, so my, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm done with uh, this part, portion of the, uh, the lecture, uh, of the, the, uh, the talk. Um, I'm, I'm... Thank you. Um, I, f I find it to be inspiring um, how, you seem to be able to really find so many people to collaborate with. And I, I think I think maybe part of why people say yes is because you have such passion when you talk about these things, it would be hard to say no. Um, I, I do have a, a question. Um, and everyone else who has questions, you can post them in the Q&A in Zoom. There's a button that says Q&A. You can post your question there and we'll try to get to as many as we can. Um, how do you so? When, how do you know when to ask someone to collaborate? Um, how do you know how, before you ask? How do you know whether or not they would be a good fit? Um, well, you. I usually read their writing. Um, I read their writing before, and if I read their writing and I love what they write, um, it, it just you can't like if you love what they write, uh, whatever they contribute to your project together, you're gonna love it. Yeah. Don't ask someone that you hate, you know, especially if you don't like the writing, you know, then your relationship with them is going to be very tumultuous. That, so, I think that fits well with the dating metaphor. Um, if you ask someone on a date, you should be a little nervous. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yes. And excited if they say yes. Um, I think that, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, are you, have you, I mean, you don't, don't name any names, but have you ever been like disappointed with how someone has collaborated? No, no, I have about a hundred percent, um, satisfaction experience. No. Um, it's very rare. Um, I haven't experienced it yet, but, um, um, the thing is the amazing thing about collaboration is that you realize how brilliant and how amazing your collaborator is. Like they surprise you with their wisdom and their um, intellectual intelligence and their literary um, experience. Um, a lot of my collaborators are so super smart. I mean, they have introduced me to great books, you know, short stories collection, poems that I wouldn't have normally exposed, even films. Um, one of my collaborators showed me a film of like this elephant listening to, um, 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 a piano sonata of Beethoven um, in uh, in the middle of the forest, and it's just very echoly beautiful. Um, and it doesn't like it sort of they expand your consciousness because they're so well educated and they're so intelligent. Um, I feel like I've learned from my collaboration is I've learned so much from from them. Um, they they become my teachers indirectly, and um, it's like a free education. It's just so. Um, it doesn't cost you anything other than your time and your commitment. Um, how do you how do you find people to ask? Um, just through your community. Um, well, I ask people like um, like you don't want to ask someone you know too well. You know, um, if you know them too well, you sort of know their pattern. They're like, oh, um, it's like asking them to see if they want to see a movie, and they're like, yeah, let's make time for it. But then they can also say no. They're like so quick, oh, I have some other commitment. We'll catch up on another time. You you want to ask someone where you sort of know them, but you want to know them even more. And so collaboration is a way for you to get to know someone well. And so, like I said, don't unless you want to convert your foes into your friends, um, um, turning your um, enemies into someone that you can get along with, um, I don't highly recommend going to that route. Just pick someone that you uh, have affinity with from a literary standpoint. Maybe they, you share the same taste in books. You send taste in fiction. Um, you, um, 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 you don't want to um, 
to collaborate with someone that, um, like my sister, if I ask her to do it, she'll do it for two days. And then she's like, hey, um, I, I really want to uh, watch, um, you know, um, all the Hera Potter series. So can we just do it another time? Yeah. So that wouldn't be a good one. Um, I think that's a, a interesting idea that you shouldn't know them too well because you're right. Once you have a relationship with someone, like there's all these other entanglements. Yeah. So it seems like it 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 makes it more focused on the collaboration if you if if you don't already have that relationship too established. Do you think that's part of why that works? Well, it's the, well, you want to expand your literary community, you know, and you want to grow, you know. Mm -hmm. There are ways to grow from comfort, and there's also a way to grow from discomfort. Comfort is with people that you know really well, and discomfort is from complete strangers. And so it's a, um, it's a good way to create memories because memory create creativity, produce, make you more creative. Um, and so um, I, um, I, I, I tend to ask strangers more so than with um, um, with my best friends. So with my best friends now, we do collaborate, but um, it takes us a year now uh, yeah. to write a full length manuscript together. Yeah. It just It takes a long time because they have all the other commitment. Um, so normally that would take us one uh, month to write or take us a year now. Um, by June 1st, June 3rd is uh, officially a, a year in which um, my partner and I are collaborating with my best friend. And we have a full length, almost a full length manuscript now, but it's taken us a year mm -hmm. as a result. When you, when you approach someone who you don't know very well or you don't know at all to collaborate, how do you ask them? Um, I just uh, go on either um, Instagram um, or on Facebook or on an email, or if I see it, them at a reading, I'm like, and I saw them at a reading together on Zoom, I'm like, hey, I noticed that we've seen each other on a few Zoom experience. I love your, I, re, I read your writing. I love it. Um, would you want to collaborate on one poem with me? So don't start with something like, let's write a book together, like a 5,000 page book together. That, that would scare them off. You want to do like lightly, like a light, uh, instead of like a, a five course dinner, you want to say, hey, can we have some tea or coffee? But it would be just a poem, an equivalent of that. So, yeah. so you would find someone, I mean, so many writers are on social media, so you could find them there, someone you admire, mm -hmm. or just someone who is part of the community in terms of attending readings. Yeah. Very small and <laughs> not intimidating. Yeah. Or if they ask me to come to a reading or they ask me to read somewhere and I have pre, uh, I've already committed myself, but don't have time. I can offer like a side note. I'm like, Hey, I can't commit to this, but I would love to collaborate with you. Yeah. You know? So a, a way of turning no into yes. I see. Um, I, I thought, it, I think it was really interesting that you did a collaboration on Google docs because this is like the new technology that the internet has allowed is two people writing the same text document at the same time. Um, can you talk a little bit more about how that worked? Were you like writing in the same sentences at the same time or were you taking turns? Uh, both. We were, I, I did everything actually because I did so many collaboration with so many people. I get to experience quite a spectrum. On the Google Doc, you can create a, um, um, a Google, you know, I can actually, um, um, I, what I, I create a new document and then I add them like through an email and I add them to the doc. And I said, let's start the project. I'll create a, a, a makeshift title, like um, 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 how to um, uh, milk a, a, a cow with, with, without hands, for instance. <laughs> Um, and so then um, that would be the tie of our poem. And then based on that suggestions, I would write the first line. And then I said, it's ready. It's like a chess move. I'm like, I would text that person and say, I, I made my move already. It's your turn. Yeah. Um, sometimes because uh, of time compressed, I would schedule a time like um, with Miriam, I'll, because she is from Norway and she has four children. And the only time that she could collaborate was from um, 3 p.m. Um, 
to 3 p.m. Um, Central Time to 4 p.m., um, which is where before her night, before she goes to sleep. Yeah. Um, and so that's the only time when she tuck her children into bed and she would have this one hour window in which I could collaborate with her. Um, so we would meet there and I would write a sentence. She'll write the next sentence. And since we are doing a short story collection together, uh, she will alternate. She'll write one line, I write the next sentence and we'll alternate until we finish. And then uh, uh, like it will reach like 10 pages. I'll say, I think the story is finished, don't you think? And then we'll start with a new story. Um, I will ask her, you know, what do you feel like writing right now? You know, what kind of story do you want? And she will say, you know, I want to have a character that takes place that is in Tokyo. So we start doing some information about Tokyo, you know, flight time and um, their transportation system. And then we just launch right in. Um, um, does um, that answer your question? Yeah, and lots of interesting details. So when you were meeting with, was it Miriam? Yes. Uh, were you, did you have like a Zoom meeting on one side and like the document on the other side of your window or were you just in the document? We were in a document. Um, he, because she's international, she, called, she told me to download Kirk, which is a chat, chat device for international people. Like that's what her sister used. So I download, um, um, I, I, down, I download with um, the app and then I'll say, um, Today, can we meet in Norwegian? I will type this all in Norwegian and I'll say, can we meet at 3 p.m.? Um, and she'll say, um, no, I have my sister-in-law is visiting. Can we meet on Monday instead? Mm -hmm. And so um, 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 the, the time lapse doesn't really bother us um, at different time zone because we'll meet. Um, it, it, her, my 3 p.m. is like 10. Um, and sometimes like we will, I would show up and she will uh, be not there. And we realized that because we, our uh, time changes, you know, the, um, uh, the clock moved like an hour ahead or below, be, uh, fall behind. And uh, we didn't realize that. And then I'll say, oh, we'll meet in an hour. Then. Oh, we can meet now, she will say. Um, um, and um. Um, also, um, when you ask someone, don't ask ubiquitously. Um, actually, pick a person and ask them instead of because it, anyone could just like fall into silence. Yeah. So um, you might want to be very precise in the person that you ask, and um, you might want to read their writing. Ask for their writing. You know, hey, um, I'm curious. You, I've I've read your short story already. Could I read another piece of yours? And then you love it. You start collaborating and. Start with one story. Don't say you're going to write a book together. Um, start start small, like tea first. Mm -hmm. Tea first. That makes sense. I, I, I imagine you've collaborated with a lot of people where it was just one poem or one small story as a, yeah. And yeah, with Brie, with Brie, like Brie Cameron, who was living in India, she was actually an American. Um, she, uh, um, she was traveling to India. She was supposed to fly back to the United States. She got stuck because of COVID. There was a huge breakout. She couldn't leave the country. And so I said, hey, uh, do you want to write a poem together? And then our poem became 20 pages. And then I'm like, oh, maybe we should do a manuscript together. Um, yeah. Um, um, so, um, uh, do gentle, see if you get along first on the page, you know, see if you're yeah, comfortable know. on the language and on the page, you know, you don't want to, have, you know, maybe a fist fight can turn into like on, on the page, of course, um, uh, become something beautiful, but you know, like test drive at first, you know, try a poem, try a few lines, uh, try a very short story, like a flash fiction, where you can meet together for like 15 minutes, and you're like, we'll write a flash fiction piece together, we have 15 minutes to, to do it, we set a timeline, and when we're done, we're like, we'll read it together, and if it's good, you, you write another flash fiction piece, and then if you write 150 flashing piece, that's a full manuscript there, yeah. and if you do that once a day, for 150 days, you would have a collection together in a very short time. Um, Laura asked, um, did you create your artistic blend of photos and poetry before contacting the publisher? Um, yes, we had a full length manuscript. Um, we also wrote a synopsis together. Mm -hmm. So we sat down and we write um, with Brie, uh, we wrote together a synopsis. 
before we sign out uh, with my partner, Jessica Alexander. We wrote a synopsis um, and we, we, um, we formatted it properly. We had everything ready. And then we have our bio, we have our photo authors, photos, and we have everything ready. So we just send it out massively. So you, you create um, um, a, um, a, a uniform a structure in which everything must have, like you have the manuscript, you have all the photos, you have synopsis, you have the page number, you have it uh, converted to a PDF and Word file. So a PDF is the one that you sent to publisher so that the text doesn't get manipulated during, because Word, no. you can click based on their, um, um, their, um, uh, their formatting on their current computer screen. And you have all that uniform and you just send it. If it gets rejected, you send out again, you write, Dear publisher, uh, dear Tin House, you say, and you're like, here's our synopsis, our book. We wrote this together. It took us um, two years. We edited it in one month. It became a 115-page manuscript. And would you publish it? Yeah. Um, you mentioned in your talk being relentless in your efforts to get published. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, about what it really takes in terms of being relentless? in order to get your work published? Yes, um, but I mean, everyone's gonna say no, you know, like when you submit a piece out there, uh, you know, it's not, sometimes you land on an, ide an ideal reader. And so part of my process is just to take the, um, the ego out of the system, um, out, of the, uh, out of the submitting system that you have for yourself and just, um, and it was fun. One thing that um, when I was friends with Mona Awad, um, she said, "Be you know, whenever I send a piece out and it get rejected, the next day I go to the post office and I send another piece. Yeah. It's just, you just have to, um, that's being relentless. You just, you, you don't let a no, um, a rejection stop you from um, manifesting your dreams. So if you want to be published, um, um, you just have to put your, like, uh, take the risk, take the failure, um, be willing to fail over and over again. And each time that you do, you just become stronger. And at some point it just become like nothing, just like rolling um, off your bed, um, getting out of bed will be just as easy as that. Do you um, think about it differently when you're submitting a collaborative work? Do you feel more obligation to get it published or do you think about it differently? I know it's a matter of time, you know, like uh, with my, like there are certain collaboration that get, you know, for some reason, they are not designed to be out in the world. For some reason, one of the collaborator is not ready to, for it to enter the world. So it would have some step back on it. Um, um, the, um, if it's not meant to be, don't push it, you know, like sometimes like um, manuscript with some of my friends that I, I collaborate with, like, a hundred collaborators and um, there's only like maybe a handful like 10 that are out in the world you know so that's 10 percent you know so yes. not not every work that you collaborate with others people will manifest in the publishing world and you 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 kind of have to take that chance that it won't exist um you know like even sperms you know like when it enters the um, it's very selective, you know, the, the uterus is selective of what eggs I get enters and it rejects millions and billions of it um, before it selects you that enters the world, right? Yeah. And if you are like a sorting mechanism uh, for um, the way that existence works. Um, so don't worry, you know, um, I, I think it's, it's very good for the process to have um, a certain portion you know like I've written 40 40 55 manuscripts and only 20 of them are in the world you know or so um so not everything is out in the world and it's okay yeah. um would you like to talk about some of the publishers who have published your collaborative works yes um so um press one one press 11 published um uh, human treacherous they were a new press um they by when i first asked them they only had like two or three books on their ro rosters they have now like 20 20 or 25 or 30 manuscripts they are publishing and they're publishing um 
they are into 2023 and 24. So they have a lot of book on back, back burner because they just have so many submissions. Um, and so um, they, they are really great press. So sometimes you want to invest in presses that are small, that um, don't have a lot of traction yet. And, but but they have a lot of potential. And those are, um, if they are starting out new, they're more likely to accept your piece than others. Um, I also noticed that they weren't publishing a lot of, they didn't have anyone um, female on the poster. And I said, we have two people here who are female and would you like to publish us, you know? So yeah. um, recognizing those like, um, 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 imbalance in the publishing industry helps a lot and recognizing where and when to to ask to be published um i um uh, coffee house press just um was didn't believe in like um um oversaturating the market one of the problems that coffee house press has with my prolificness is that they're worried that if I had a fiction book at one place another fiction they would be fighting each other for publicity space in you know in that year publication but I work in many different genres I work in playwriting um, poetry nonfiction po on uh, uh, fiction and uh, genre bonding bending um, and also um artwork, visual art. So they, I think they complement each other if, instead of fighting each other. But if someone has like five fiction books out in the world and, at five different presses, I can foresee why a press would be hard pressed to publish you if you um, work in the same genre. But I kind of crop, crop in my um, earlier lecture with, um, uh, um, um, uh, I talk about crop rotation, how you just want to have creative crop rotation in your work so that you alternate between one different type of um, genre to the next. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for your time today, V. It's been wonderful. Um, is there any anything else you want our audience to hear before we go? Um, uh, you know, life is really short, you know, so don't be afraid to take that risk um, and to connect with another person. You maybe, you know, make, you be making a new best friend you, you won't know, you know, or someone that will show up your, at your wedding as a um, groomsmaid or bridesmaid or, or whatever maids that is. Um, but um, I appreciate everyone that came to this uh, talk in the middle of this afternoon in Iowa. Um, and thank you for your comments and for your suggestions. And um, um, I really appreciate it very much. Thank you so much, V. And thank you everyone for being here today. If you have any questions for me, you can always email support at authorspublish.com. Um, I'm gonna put a link in the chat, which will take you to some of these books. Um, if you click on that, you'll be able to see more of um, some books that V has gotten published. And thank you again, everyone, for being here. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.